going forward in the real exam at question number one, there's going to be a pre-populated spreadsheet with a financial statements already prepared. And you can see that on the left. And then those financial statements will need numerically to be updated, to be corrected. Now, what I've got here is a basic example, a very simple example to give you confidence as to the processes and procedures around what you're expected to do. And I'd like you to follow me uh, in this exercise that I'm going to do for you before I get you to submit your uh, piece of work as a marked assignment, the Six Nations example. So we can see here the requirement And the requirement is only for two marks. All right. So this is not a, a particularly difficult challenge. It's just getting you used to the idea. So we've got a set of accounts here. Uh, we've uh, we've got to update and correct the balance sheets. Now, the first thing we're given is a story about depreciation. The parent company has understated the depreciation by 10. So the first thing to do is to go to the property plans and equipment and reduce it down by 10. And it might be nice to say what you're doing, that it's depreciation. So you've got a little reference point there. Might be nice to say it's to do with number one. Now that balance sheet now doesn't balance. Whatever you do to the top, you've got to do to the bottom. We know that depreciation reduces the asset, but it also reduces the profit. Now, you've got to be a little bit cute here because in the information that it was the parent company that had understated depreciation. Depreciation is something that goes through profit. So this will affect the retained earnings. So now I've taken 10 away from the top. I've also taken 10 away from the bottom. And therefore, this revised balance sheet ultimately will balance. If it had said the subsidiary had understated the depreciation and I had been told that it was an 80% sub, I would then be looking to charge an element of that against the non-controlling interest because it would be affecting the subsidiary's profits. But I'm keeping it simple. Let's have a look at the second example. And the second piece of information relates to the impairment loss. And here we've got an impairment loss of five million. And therefore, and, and this hasn't been recorded. So I have a knee jerk reaction to know that my intangible asset in the group balance sheet is going down by five. Now, you want to set that up in a separate column. This is to do with the impairment. This is to do with uh, the second one. So we've labelled it. Now, because we've made an adjustment at the top, we've also got to make another adjustment. And maybe in another question, we'll be adding five to current assets. But that's clearly not the case. I'm tempted to say that the impairment loss should be charged against profit and therefore retained earnings come down by five. Now, if you do that, your balance sheet will still balance, but it's not the right answer. And that's because the question clearly said, if you read it properly, that we have an 80% sub where the NCI is measured at fair value. And therefore, what you now need to be aware of is the technical idea. I don't think we need to do a, a heavy calculation here, but I think you need to be aware of that. Uh, that means we're going to be charging the non-controlling interest with their share of that impairment loss. When NCI is at fair value, goodwill is in full and the impairment loss ends up being split. So therefore, effectively, 80% of that five, which is four, goes against the retained earnings. And therefore, 20% of that five, which is one, goes against the non-controlling interest. Now, fundamentally, I have now answered the question. 
Yeah. And as a showing off, as a piastre de resistance, I can now get my revised balance sheet to balance. I doubt in the exam whether it would balance because you're going to be making a, a more complicated adjustments than these and there will be no extra marks for getting it to balance. We've already earned the marks and I'm just going to show you, going to demonstrate to you that it is going to balance. And there you can see the new top half of the balance sheet is 1,035 and the new bottom half of the balance sheet is 1,035. Both sides have come down by 15. So I don't want you to obsess about getting the balance sheet to balance. And in the exam, of course, and in the marked assignment, you're going to have to provide an explanation, a written justification alongside this. I look forward to marking your work in this exam-focused format.